eyes of the world are on America as it decides if Donald Trump's time as president is up. It's an election like no other, but we're unlikely to get the result on the day. Now, the US electoral system is complicated, to say the least, so let's take a look at how it all works. It's down to the electoral college system that America uses to elect its president. Each of the 50 states, plus Washington, D.C., is awarded a certain number of votes depending on its population. For example, America's largest state, California, gets 55 votes, while sparsely populated Wyoming gets just three. In general, states award all their electoral college votes to whichever candidate gets a simple majority. So, if the Republican candidate in Texas gets 50.1% or more of the vote, they will receive all 38 electoral college votes. To be elected president, the candidate must win the majority of the 538 votes up for grabs. So the magic number to look out for is 270. This is why one candidate can receive fewer votes overall, known as the popular vote, but still become president. Some states always tend to vote the same way. For example, California normally votes Democrat and North Dakota votes Republican. It's the so-called swing states like Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, North Carolina and Florida, where the vote is very close that could decide the race. It's not just about Donald Trump and Joe Biden, however. Voters will also be choosing new members of Congress. Democrats will be hoping to hold on to their majority in the House of Representatives, the lower chamber, where all 435 seats are up for grabs. The race for the Senate, the upper chamber, could have a huge impact on the next presidency. Currently controlled by the Republicans, a third of the seats are being contested. If the Democrats win control and keep the House, they could block many of Donald Trump's plans if he wins. Likewise, a Republican-held Senate could cause big problems for Joe Biden. The pandemic has seen record numbers of people voting early and by mail, something Donald Trump has been highly critical of, meaning a result could take days or even weeks to emerge. There's also the possibility of legal action or recounts if the vote is close, all meaning this election is set to be one of the most unconventional ever held. Millions of Americans go to the polls today to elect either Donald Trump or Joe Biden as the 46th president of the United States. A record 98 million others have already cast their votes early for the man they want in the White House. The highest turnout in more than a century is expected. Well, in the final hours of campaigning, Donald Trump has been speaking at rallies in North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin and Michigan, key states in his battle to stay in the White House. You're going to be watching some very good television tomorrow night. Very good television. For the Democrats, Joe Biden's been appealing for support from voters in Pennsylvania and Ohio. He has a solid lead in national polls, but the race appears to be tightening in several crucial swing states. The message is going to be out loud and clear. It's time for Donald Trump to pack his bags and go home. Well, it's going to be a critical race. We have correspondents in several key parts of the U.S. as Americans make their historic choice. First of all, Chief Correspondent Richard Gaysford, who's live in Washington for us this morning. Good morning, Richard. Now, many businesses have been boarding up their windows, haven't they, ahead of Election Day, because of fears of unrest and violence. Yeah, the divisions have been uh, widening in this country for the last four or five years. And during this intense election period, Charlotte, the uh, tensions have certainly grown. What you're seeing here in the centre of Washington, just a block or two from the White House, is being replicated right across the capital. Uh, restaurants, bars, hotels, banks, all being boarded up. It may be out of an abundance of caution, but certainly what you're seeing is uh, people really worried about what might happen here on the streets. Uh, they've got the National Guard on standby, 3,600 troops. Groups were told have been activated. Protest groups also ready to mobilize if they don't get things going the way they think they should be. Uh, in contrast to that last night here in DC, we saw a peace vigil on the streets, uh, people standing out there with candles, urging calm, urging restraint. And during one of these vigils, we spoke to a vicar whose view of the presidency changed when President Trump used her church uh, uh, as a photo opportunity during a protest. Police with no provocation drove peaceful protesters off of the patio and, and so the president could do the photo opportunity. That was a day where I understood in a deeper way what this president, what this administration was willing to do 
to Americans exercising their constitutional rights. Well, the White House is just a block or two down that street, and it is currently being surrounded by a ring of steel, a non-scalable fence being erected there to stop anyone from trying to get in. Uh, and the president himself will be in the White House tonight, Charlotte, uh, up to 400 guests joining him for a party, we understand. Now, the rules in Washington say only 50 can gather inside at any one time, but because it's a federal building, he gets to say what the rules should be for him. Oh, OK, all right. Thanks for that, Richard. That's Richard Gaysford there in Washington. Let's go over to Lorna Shaddock now, who's in Delaware. It's Joe Biden's home state where he'll be spending election night. Good morning, Laura. What's the mood among the Democrats? Are they confident they'll have something to celebrate later? Well, as you were saying earlier, Charlotte, all the polling heading into this election day does indicate that it is Joe Biden's race to lose. But, of course, this is a Democratic Party that is haunted by the spectre of Hillary Clinton's unexpected loss back in 2016. So they are taking nothing for granted. And that is why Joe Biden headed to that swing state of Pennsylvania for some of his last election campaign appearances, as well as Ohio. And he was appearing uh, on stage in that key swing state with uh, the pop star Lady Gaga. And we heard him uh, earlier talking about how uh, Donald Trump should be packing his bags and going home. But he also said uh, that he hoped that things would be coming together for a big win. But in fact, it is Joe Biden who is going to be heading home a bit later on. He'll be heading right here to Wilmington in Delaware. This is his campaign headquarters and this is where he's going to be spending election night. This state, of course, one that he has called home for many years and where he was a senator. So he'll be here at his campaign headquarters. But right down the road is a little diner where Joe Biden has been a regular for over 60 years since he was a teenager. He's been coming uh, very often. We met lots of people at that diner who have met him and spoken to him. And uh, they told us that they are hoping for a big win for the candidate from a small state. Coming from Delaware, Delaware is so small. And to have somebody, you know, at least to run for presidency and then that'd be amazing if he wins. I think it's awesome. He's put Delaware on the map. He really has. Well, we're praying for him. We definitely need a change in this country. Let's say our Irish prayers and let's hope for Joe. Well, it's been a gruelling 18 months or so of campaigning for Joe Biden. High hopes, as you heard there here in Delaware, that this is the night that he can finally bring the presidency home. Lorna, thanks very much. From Delaware to Florida now, where the result is expected to be exceptionally close. One poll suggests Donald Trump has cut Joe Biden's lead to a single point. Ross King is in Miami Beach for us. Morning to you, Ross. And of all the battleground states, it seems Florida's the least predictable, isn't it? It certainly is, Charlotte. And as we've said here just a few moments ago, they've actually started counting the votes. Nine million people have voted early here. It's been one of the largest swing states now for many decades. And again, it is too close to call at the moment. Biden and Trump have both said if you win here in Florida, then you win the election. It's not blue. It's not red. They're calling it purple at the moment. It's Trump's home state. But also when it comes to Trump himself, very confident, as we saw him last night, but also Biden supporters equally confident. I think that this election is the most important of our time. Um, I think that there's going to be a clear winner on Tuesday, and that's going to be Joe Biden. There's so much at stake right now. Um, so the day after, I think, can be very, very um, dangerous. We're not worried. We're not panicking. We just know that just how we could get in the streets here and do a peaceful rally, just get people out to vote. Here it's very important to get Latino voters, to get the older voters too. A lot of people retired down here. And of course, the last time they voted here, they voted for Trump. We will see exactly what happens later. The polls open between 7 until 7 tomorrow. We're now actually the third highest place for COVID here. So at every polling station, masks must be worn.